Hello, uh, my name is Dan Withers. I'm one of the uh, knee surgeons here in the Sports Surgery Clinic. And uh, thanks for watching my talk here on common knee problems and uh, golf. Just at the start, um, just to put a disclaimer out there, if anyone's watching this and uh, hoping to shave a few uh, numbers off their handicap, there's definitely no money back guarantee because uh, I definitely won't be able to help you with that. But hopefully I'll be able to uh, teach you a, a few things about uh, the common issues that, that arise uh, when playing golf. So just as way of background, uh, as a knee surgeon, uh, uh, most of the, the operations that I would perform uh, are things like knee replacements. Uh, and that uh, includes partial knee replacements and total knee replacements. Uh, and then the other half of what I do really is a lot of sports knee injuries, uh, mostly uh, the famous ACL ligament reconstructions. I also do surgery on uh, meniscal injuries and uh, various other ligaments. And also uh, occasionally uh, I do some operations on uh, kneecap or patella instability. So when you talk about the knee, uh, the anatomy of the knee, uh, what really the knee is made up of, it's of bones, uh, ligaments, and some uh, menisci. So the bones that you, that uh, make up the knee include the, the femur or thigh bone, uh, the shin bone or tibia, and then the patella or kneecap on the front of the knee. So that's the, the three main uh, parts of the knee joint. In between the main hinge part of the knee joint, between the, the thigh bone and the shin bone, you have two little C-shaped cushions, uh, uh, one on the inside called the medial meniscus and one on the outside called the lateral meniscus. Essentially, they act as little shock absorbers uh, uh, to distribute the forces that go through the knee joint. And then the other part of the knee is the ligaments. And there's sort of four main ligaments. You can see the two green ones on either side there. That's the medial collateral ligament towards the inside part of the knee. And then the lateral collateral ligament towards the outside part of the knee. The blue ligament there is the anterior cruciate ligament. And then the yellow one there is the posterior cruciate ligament. Uh, the anterior crucial ligament is the main sort of stabilizer for rotatory instability of the knee. Uh, and then the posterior crucial ligament, it stops uh, backward motion of the shin bone on the thigh bone. So the most common issues really that would relate to golf. Now uh, there is a lot of different knee issues, but the two main ones that I would mostly see would be related to osteoarthritis, which is where in tear of the knee joint and meniscal tears. Those are the, the, definitely the two most common things. Funny enough, two of the most high profile golf, golfers, uh, they didn't have those uh, injuries. Uh, Brooks Kepka actually uh, had a dislocated kneecap uh, whenever he had his injury. And then uh, Tiger Woods, uh, he actually had a torn ACL, uh, which he had reconstructed, uh, but actually subsequent to the reconstruction, I think he had some ongoing issues uh, because of the instability and had some issues with the menisci then. He had a couple of other operations and he did, obviously did a proper job on it uh, last year. Uh, so, but the articular cartilage uh, of the knee joint, uh, basically uh, what happens in osteoarthritis, it's, it's a wear and tear thing. The main issue with articular cartilage, it's normally that nice uh, shiny uh, uh, tissue on the end of the bone that allows the, the joint to glide on top of each other. Uh, as I say, the main issue really with it is that the, the, it, it has no nerve supply or blood supply. So whenever it's uh, damaged, it doesn't have the capability to regenerate itself. Uh, it affects pretty much uh, every joint in your body, but very commonly it affects the knee and the hip, uh, also the neck and back would be uh, other common areas to be affected. Sometimes you hear various people talking about different stages uh, of osteoarthritis. And really what that means, uh, these pictures here are from uh, arthroscopic pictures of the, the knee. And you can see the cartilage. In picture A there, you see that the, the little probe uh, pressing into the, the cartilage, it's a little soft. You see the indentation there. That's very, very early uh, wear and tear of the cartilage, and that's stage one. 
Stage two is pictures B and C. And at that stage, you start to get a little bit of fraying and fibrillation of the, the cards itself. In picture D there, then you see some partial uh, partial thickness loss of the cartilage. And then in pictures E and F, it actually wears right down to the bone. And sometimes you might hear people saying that about stage four, osteoarthritis or bone on bone is uh, another common phrase that people might use. The risk factors uh, for uh, osteoarthritis include age, everyone as you start to get older, uh, and develop some level of wear and tear and around about 50 percent of people uh, of adults over their lifetime will develop symptoms at some stage or other uh, due to osteoarthritis in the knee with around about 25 percent having symptoms related to the hip over their lifetime obviously obesity uh, the more force that goes through the knee uh, uh, the more uh, pressure and wear and tear can develop a history of previous injury uh, family history overuse and also muscle weakness and imbalance uh, uh, can all uh, be risk factors to develop and uh, osteoarthritic change. However, there is a large proportion of people who are asymptomatic of osteoarthritis. As I say, if uh, you scan a lot of people's knee, to some degree, you might see a little bit of wear and tear. And there actually has been studies performed where uh, uh, people had uh, MRIs uh, of their knee and around about 40% of adults over 40 years old showed signs of osteoarthritic change uh, on the scan. Uh, some may have been fairly minor, uh, ranging, up, ranging up to uh, the more severe uh, stage four. Uh, reasons why uh, you may not develop symptoms, it could be a lot to do with the strength of the muscles around the joint itself um, and, and the biomechanics. Uh, they may have an important role in and uh, keeping the symptoms at bay of uh, osteoarthritic change. This is actually uh, uh, an interesting little study as well. Uh, sometimes people you know, may get uh, a little bit uh, worried that they might need to go through some form of knee replacement or something like that. But actually this study here was, it was actually from Spain and it included around about uh, 50,000 people. And uh, they looked at the, around 50,000 people and Everyone who was diagnosed by their GP with having osteoarthritic change, they watched them over their lifetime, and only around about 30% of people who actually had a diagnosis of osteoarthritis ended up going through a knee replacement. As mentioned before, obesity or increased weight was actually a risk factor uh, that uh, increased your risk of uh, requiring some form of knee replacement. As we mentioned, this is this is what uh, the osteoarthritis, osteoarthritis looks like. You get wearing away of the cartilage um, and uh, that uh, wears down to the bone. You also may uh, develop little bits of extra bone called osteophyte as your own articular cartilage tries to regenerate, but it does it in an abnormal fashion. The symptoms, well, the main symptom is pain. And, uh, uh, you know, uh, the pain can actually be quite severe. You have, some patients may, uh, may have uh, limited range of motion and stiffness. Uh, you can have swelling. Uh, you can develop pain after standing for long periods or walking, obviously walking uh, around the golf. Um, and then uh, some people develop night pain and, and that might be actually an indication whereby you might say, well, this is getting quite bad here that you might need to consider some form of knee replacement or some treatment. How do you diagnose it? Uh, an X, a plain x-ray or an MRI scan will, will show, show up. And as you can see here in, in the uh, picture, uh, the knee on the, on the uh, left of the screen here should be very severe uh, arthritic change with no gap between the joint, whereas the other knee, you can see a gap between the joint there. The treatment uh, initially uh, with uh, these conditions, I would start with conservative uh, management, uh, taking simple painkillers, uh, starting off with a simple thing like paracetamol or an anti-inflammatory. And uh, sometimes it's not a bad idea to say, for example, if you were going to go for a round of golf to 
take a few anti-inflammatory, maybe one or two hours before you go out to play. And uh, that may prevent a buildup of pain that would develop uh, during the round or after. Weight loss, as we obviously said, uh, will help. And uh, it's well known that around about seven times your body weight actually goes through your knee on certain activities. So even if you lost uh, one kilo, that's seven kilos of force uh, less through the knee joint. Sometimes people ask about supplements. And actually, if you look at the evidence for supplements, there's no clear evidence for any uh, supplement that actually prevents osteoarthritis. But there is some uh, some evidence to suggest that things like glucosamine and chondroitin could actually have a small role in uh, pain relief of symptomatic osteoarthritis. So it's, you know, when you're uh, treating it uh, initially conservatively, it's all about breaking the pain cycle. Normally what will happen in these situations, you'll develop pain. And then because you have pain, uh, you start to uh, become less active because you feel as if you don't want to uh, injure it more. And then actually in a roundabout way, your muscles become deconditioned and less uh, strong and more force then moves through the knee joint uh, and then it's just a vicious cycle it becomes more painful and then more weak uh, and it goes round uh, like that this is something interesting here everyone as you get older uh, will uh, have decreased uh, muscle strength and bulk and this is actually an mri scan just showing quite clearly of, of someone who uh, had an MRI scan of their thigh at age 25 on the left there. And then at age 63, the same person, you can see that uh, the uh, muscle there uh, is a lot smaller. And it just it just shows uh, that muscle function uh, will have a big role here as well. And the main, the main um, muscle groups that you'd, you'd really want to strengthen up when you have issues with the knee are the quadricep muscles and the glute muscles, which is basically your bum muscle. How you can do that? You can start off with some simple things, a bit of uh, conditioning, uh, first of all, on an exercise, stationary exercise bike. Uh, there's good evidence that aquatic therapy uh, for knee osteoarthritis uh, uh, does reduce symptoms. And then there is uh, some simple exercises that you could do. At the top of the screen there is uh, some straight leg raises, and then you can do that with a little resistance bands at the bottom of the screen there, uh, and that can uh, quite uh, uh, build up the uh, quadricep muscles quite well. This is at the top of the screen called the hip bridge. This is for your glute muscles, basically squeezing your glute muscles and lifting your hip up off the ground. And then if you want to do try it a little bit harder, you can do a single leg hip bridge wall sit as well uh, a little wall sit uh, for a period of time and then some little goblet squats with uh, a small weight even a bag of sugar uh, onto uh, a higher a little high bench uh, so those are those are actually sort of four uh, simple little uh, strengthening exercises that anybody could really do and they can they can actually help quite a lot in terms of the symptoms then if your symptoms are ongoing um, and uh, uh, it is causing a lot of pain still, you might want to consider an injection. Uh, the different, there's different types of injection. There's a standard corticosteroid. Um, there's hyaluronic acid, which sometimes people call a gel injection. Or there's something called platelet-rich plasma. Uh, which is something that uh, we've been using a little bit more of the last sort of four or five years. And what that is, we take a small amount of blood, around about 15 mils, and we spin it in a centrifuge. And then we siphon off the top layer uh, of cells, which includes mostly the platelets, which they have natural anti-inflammatory properties. And it, you, you inject that back into the knee, and uh, that can calm down of the inflammation and irritability within the knee joint. So those are some things that actually in combination with the physiotherapy uh, uh, can uh, definitely dampen down a lot of the symptoms. If you 
have already tried all those options and you still have an, a lot of pain, uh, then this may be something that you might end up having to have. This is a total knee replacement. Uh, and uh, basically what happens, we shave away the ends of the, the, the bone and the thigh bone and then shave away the top of the shin bone. And uh, there's metal replacements attached on either side. And then there's a very strong plastic put in between that. This is an x-ray of, of that afterwards. And then this is something called a partial knee or unique compartmental knee replacement, uh, which is also uh, quite a good option. Uh, this is used in, in people who have very specific uh, wear and tear pattern, mostly towards the inside part of the knee. And whenever the symptoms are uh, mostly on the inside, this is a good option. And it actually, uh, probably a slightly easier recovery uh, than the uh, total knee replacement itself. Uh, it, it tends to be slightly quicker recovery. Uh, so that's osteoarthritis. Uh, the other thing that I mentioned is meniscal tears. Meniscal tears are extremely common. And uh, uh, basically uh, they uh, occur uh, frequently. And it, it, if you scanned everyone over 40 years old, you could see probably 30% of people could have a meniscal tear itself. Not everyone uh, will have symptoms. And the most common type of tear is probably a degenerative type of tear. Uh, they can happen in all different orientations. You can get a bucket handle tear, which you can see at the bottom there where a fragment actually displaces and then uh, locks, uh, make, uh, makes your knee lock. Uh, but then uh, you can have a, a flap tear, or a complex tear, which uh, is in different orientations. The symptoms, normally the symptoms of meniscal tear will be a fairly uh, uh, short history. It, it probably uh, develops uh, quite uh, suddenly. Uh, people tend to have some sharp pain. Most commonly the medial meniscus towards the inside part of the knee. And a lot of times when uh, people are swinging uh, the golf club, they'll feel a sharp pain towards the inside. Sometimes people have a, some catching, and as mentioned, sometimes the knee might lock up on them. Diagnosis uh, is through an MRI scan, and you can see here, this is looking at the knee from the side. Uh, the blue arrow there is pointing to the posterior or the uh, back part of the uh, meniscus itself. And on that scan there, normally there's a nice, uh, distinct black triangle, but you can see the white line through the little black triangle at the back, and that signifies tear. The treatment for it, initially really, it should be a conservative management. And I would normally recommend people try some physiotherapy for at least six to eight weeks, and maybe sometimes even longer. Uh, and uh, if it's very painful, adding in an injection to try and dampen down that pain is an option. There is quite a lot of people who can manage with a meniscal tear uh, and uh, it settles down with conservative measures. But if it's not settling and still quite acute pain after that period, uh, there is an option then to uh, perform an arthroscopy uh, where uh, the tear is trimmed down and any of the loose edges on is trimmed down to a stable edge so that there's nothing getting caught within the knee joint again. And that's normally performed as a day case uh, through two small little incisions uh, and uh, a keyhole. And it's normally fairly successful. So in summary, uh, knee problems are extremely common. Uh, and the most common uh, for golfers would be osteoarthritis and meniscal tears. Uh, conservative management is uh, feasible in most knee conditions, and I, I would always suggest trying that as a first line. Uh, physiotherapy and strength and condition is extremely important. And uh, that's uh, all I have. Um, if you've got any questions, I'm more than happy to answer, except uh, any on golf, as I say, I'm definitely not going to be any help to any of you. Uh, thank you very much once again. Thanks. Hi, Dan. Thanks for that really interesting talk. So we have questions are flying in. So we'll uh, start with the first one from Alan. 
Alan says he had an MRI on his left knee and it showed him to have a large medial paramenisgal to cyst. Is it pain, if it is pain-free, should he continue to play golf with it? Uh, that's, a, that's a good question, thanks very much. Um, basically the answer is yes. Um, meniscal, uh, parameniscal cysts are very common and uh, they're quite a common finding on MRI, MRIs. Um, basically they occur just because of some degeneration in the meniscus tissue itself and then they get a little bit of a fluid collection around the meniscus and if it's pain free i would absolutely leave it alone um unless yeah. it started causing problems yeah yeah good uh right i have a question here from joe he says he gets cracking in his left knee when he does any kind of squatting uh, it's not painful but sometimes he does worry about later on, and he plays golf every weekend and most days in the summer. Should it be something he should be doing something about now? Again, this is um, a very, very common finding. People, uh, even people with normal knees can find yeah. where they can crack and pop and uh, do all sorts of things. And it's generally never anything to worry about. Um, a lot of times what it can be is a little bit of roughness of the uh, joint surface underneath the kneecap. Um, and if it's not causing any pain at all, it's 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 um it's generally fine, um, and it's not anything to worry about that they're doing any damage to me or anything like that. Uh, so yeah, I would again just uh, carry on as normal. Okay. Uh, another question here: um, When should you typically decide to get a knee replacement? Like, what is the time frame for returning to golf for a relatively fit fifty-five-year-old after a knee replacement? So knee replacement, it's it's um. It's basically a quality of life um, operation. So it really depends, you know, how bad the pain is, how much that's impacting on your quality of life and restricting, restricting all your, your daily activities. Um, so if it gets to the point where, you know, maybe you're on painkillers every day, uh, you might be able to walk more than sort of five, 10 minutes before you're getting pain, you have a lot of swelling, maybe you can't even sleep at night with the pain those are all uh, sort of factors that you might start saying you know would indicate that it's time to get a new replacement for me age doesn't really matter too much it's more the symptoms and how much that's impacting on your quality of life um and with regards to getting back to say something like golf it probably would take i would say it would probably take the guts of at least three months before okay. you be getting back to to, to any type of golf uh, yeah okay good um now there's a hip question here but you can answer this if you've been diagnosed with a mild to moderate um degeneration in the hip what are the chances of having to get a hip replacement at some stage so it's, it's very much like the knee uh, yeah. I, I normally say to everyone to some degree all of us will have a little bit of wear and tear in your joints in your knee and your hip and some people may be affected with symptoms of it and others may not. And it really depends on symptoms. And there was a slide there that I mentioned um, around about 30% of people during their lifetime would need a knee replacement, um, haven't had a diagnosis of osteoarthritis. So there is a large majority, I would say, of people who have wear and tear and don't have the symptoms that would fit to need you know, something like a hip replacement or a knee replacement. Yeah. Thank you. So a uh, question here um, from Ema. Do um, the hyaluronic acid injections help knee osteoarthritis? Um, I suppose the short answer is yes. Um, some people get good relief off it. Others don't. Um, it probably would help in the more mild to moderate cases of osteoarthritis. And uh, it is, as I mentioned, it's, it's one of the first line treatments, either a hyaluronic acid or a steroid injection or a platelet-rich plasma injection, it would be the initial treatment for me uh, to try and uh, try conservative management. So you would inject it and get some physiotherapy and then uh, give it a period of around four to six months and see what type of benefit that would have. And yeah. then, you know, base your uh, decision on whether or not you need to do something further based on uh, how long relief that they've had from it. Okay, uh, and someone else has asked, would wearing a knee brace be any benefit when playing golf? Um, if you look at a lot of the evidence on it, 
Um, there's not a great deal of evidence to say that a knee brace is actually going to do anything physically. But what I normally say to people is if they feel as if it's given some sort of symptomatic relief, then I would, you know, I would certainly say you can try it. I Normally, I wouldn't try and, uh, you know, spend too much on any sort of fancy braces. Um, but yeah, if it's given some type of relief, I would say go ahead, yeah. Okay. Uh, another one. What is the time frame returning to golf after ACL? After an ACL, would, yeah. After an ACL, I would be uh, a bit more cautious, probably on just the rotation. Uh, so I would normally say between sort of the four to six month mark before I would recommend getting back to to uh, golf after an ACL surgery. Uh, it's it's more to do with the, the rotation there that that uh, is happening. Yeah, uh, someone who does a lot of hill walking and golf, and they can walk for hours on the flat or uphill without any problems. But as soon as they start descent, they get pain in their left knee. The steeper the incline, the greater the pain. Any idea what's happening here? Or so that's suggestions? that's uh, very very common. <coughs> and, and what it is normally, uh, maybe as as I mentioned on the on the the talk, the, there's two sort of main parts of the knee joint. There's the main hinge part between the thigh bone and the shin bone. And then the other part is between the kneecap and the thigh bone, your, your, your patella. So it's extremely common to get a little bit of wear and tear underneath the patella. And uh, when you have patella wear and tear, when you're coming downstairs or inclines, that's the, the moment that that part of the joint is being loaded more. So roughly about seven times your body weight goes through the knee on those activities. And that's why it's probably more sore um, doing those activities. I have to say, but whenever uh, people do have patellofemoral degenerative change, it can be very well managed conservatively and generally doesn't end up needing any knee replacement as such because it's only really on activities such as going downhill, kneeling, or going down stairs. Good. Uh, I think another one here, one more. Um, have a meniscus tear and wondering, should I play golf? If I'm pain-free while I wait for the operation, will I cause any more damage? Um, yes. I mean, if, if you have a meniscus tear and uh, you're pain-free, then I would say, yeah, there's, you should you should play on. Um, it, it doesn't really mean that you're not going to cause any more damage to it. Um, and if you're completely pain-free, then sometimes you may not even need the surgery for it because yeah. as i mentioned before uh meniscal tears uh, they can be asymptomatic as well so if you're actually managing fairly well and you've got got the tear it doesn't necessarily mean that you actually need to go and have have the operation yeah and someone else had asked would the meniscus tear repair itself so it depends what <clears throat> depends what type of tear it is the orientation of the tear uh but generally the most common type of tears, degenerative meniscal tear, and those type of tears don't don't heal as such. But what I normally say is they can become asymptomatic, whereby yes, you have a tear, but it doesn't cause any symptoms. But it doesn't necessarily heal itself. Yeah. It? Uh, Dan, thanks for that. Now the questions are still coming through, but we might send you some of them as, and see if Rebecca might be able to send them some responses tomorrow. Okay. That's great. Thanks. And if anybody's got any tips for me for my golf, I'd be more than happy to take them back in return. Lovely. Thank you. Thanks.